Welcome to the CSSN channel. Our topic for the day is what form of vitamin D should I take? Pills, drops or injections? My name is Abu Zar Habibinia. I have an MD degree and I'm the director of the Canadian Academy of Sport Nutrition. Subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a regular basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness and sport nutrition. Okay, one of the questions that we have received from many was this. What form of vitamin D should I take? Should I take pills? Should I take drops? Or should I go with injections? Today you will find out the answer. Our presentation today is going to be in three parts. In the first part, we discuss vitamin D3 forms and indications. In part two, we discuss vitamin D2 forms and indications. And in part three, we're gonna discuss vitamin D analogs and their indications. Let's go with part one. Before we go to the forms and indications of vitamin D3, we need to do a quick review about the metabolism of vitamin D3. This is to help understand the presentation better. I'm sure you know that in the skin and under the influence of ultraviolet from the sun, 7-B-hydroxycholesterol converts to vitamin D3 uh, and its other name is cholecalciferol. Vitamin D3 will be carried to the liver and in the liver will be converted to 25-hydroxy-vitamin D3 and its other name is calciferiol and calciferiol will be carried to the kidneys and in the kidneys under the influence of an enzyme which is called 1-alpha-hydroxylase will be converted to 125-dehydroxy-vitamin D3 and its other name is calcitriol. Basically calcitriol is the active form of vitamin D. All those benefits you get from vitamin D they come from calcitriol. So in medicine and pharmaceutical industries, we have cholecalciferol, calciferol, and calcitriol. Uh, cholecalciferol is the most commonly prescribed form of vitamin D worldwide. And we have over there pills, drops, and shots. And calciferol comes in pills and shots and calcitriol comes in pills and shots. Let's see uh, which form uh, you're gonna really need. Let's go with uh, cholecalciferol first. As I said, uh, cholecalciferol is the uh, most commonly prescribed uh, vitamin D worldwide. We have over there pills and drops, they come in different formulations. You know, uh, 1,000 IU per pill, 5,000, 50,000. In general, uh, drops and pills, they are pretty much the same. And many studies show that the, the rate of absorption is the same. Uh, in one of our videos in the past, uh, we discussed that the absorption of cholecalciferol doesn't matter drops or pills is between 55% and 95%. So both of them, they are pretty much the same. And in general, if you are a healthy person, you are going to take uh, vitamin D just for maintaining or your vitamin D is slightly is low, you are going to raise your vitamin D level. Definitely uh, cholecalciferol in the forms of drops uh, or pulse, they are definitely enough. However, there is a one study done in Sweden and they published that study in May 2020. In that study, they had given uh, cholecalciferol in the forms of drops and pills to those people who were suffering from immunodeficiency. They realized that both of them, they equally increased vitamin D level in, in patients. However, they realized that those patients who had received cholecalciferol in drops, they required less antibiotics. But as I said, if you are a healthy person, you are just going to take vitamin D3 for, uh, for general health, for maintaining your vitamin D level, uh, vitamin uh, D3 in drops or pills, they are pretty much the same and you need to see which one is convenient for you. However, there are six groups of people, if they take uh, cholecalciferol in the forms of drops or pills, they are not going to see that much benefits. That's why those people, they have to go uh, with cholecalciferol in the form of shots. 
why don't these three shots uh, come in different formulations like uh, 300,000 uh, per shot, 600,000 per shot. Sometimes they come in a small vial of 5 uh, milliliters which provides you 100,000 uh, IU per 1 ml. But let's see who are those six groups of people that actually they're going to need colocalciferol in the form of injections. I'm going to put them in here for you. First group, no gallbladder that is cracked. If you don't have your gallbladder, if your gallbladder has been removed for any reasons, because of infection, inflammation, or some other reasons. This is going to affect the absorption of vitamin D3 because we discussed in one of our videos in the past that vitamin D requires bile for better absorption. That's why those people, they're gonna need vitamin D shots from time to time to keep their vitamin D level within normal ranges. Group two, gastric bypass. If you have done gastric bypass surgery in the past, could be because of obesity or some other reasons, this is going to affect the absorption of vitamin D3. That's why uh, those people, if they take vitamin uh, D3 in the forms of pills and drops, they're going to see that the, their vitamin D level doesn't rise properly. That's why they're going to need vitamin D in the forms of injections. Group three, those people that have been diagnosed with uh, celiac disease. If you have been diagnosed with celiac disease, uh, this is going to affect the absorption of vitamin uh, D. Those people that have been diagnosed with uh, Crohn disease, especially if the disease is active. Crohn disease is one of the inflammatory bubble diseases that can affect the whole GI system. And group uh, five, those people that have been diagnosed with the disease, uh, and it's a medicine, it's famous as uh, Weepal's disease. If you have been diagnosed with Weepal disease, I'm afraid that uh, if you take vitamin D3 in the forms of drops and pulse, you may not get that much benefit. You're gonna see that your vitamin D level doesn't rise uh, in the way you are you were expecting. That's why you're gonna need uh, vitamin D3 uh, in the form of shots. And the last group in general, if you are suffering from any kind of mal, uh, basically absorption, you're gonna need vitamin D in the form of injections. Let's see who is gonna need calciferiol it doesn't matter pills or shots again in here we have six groups of people that to adjust their vitamin d level it's better for them to go with the calciferiol who are those six groups i'm going to put them in here for you first group liver disease if you have been diagnosed with any kind of uh, liver diseases since that disease could affect the conversion of vitamin D3 to calciferiol, that's why it's better to go with calciferiol, not cholecalciferol. Second group, those people, they are taking this medication, isoniazid. This is a medication in medicine that is prescribed for the treatment and prevention of tuberculosis. So if you are on this medication for a long time, because this medication is going to affect, basically is going to block the conversion of vitamin D3 to calciferiol. That's why if you are on this medication, it's better you go directly uh, with uh, calciferiol. Group three, if you have been diagnosed with nephrotic syndrome, this is a kind of uh, kidney disease. If you have been diagnosed with this kidney disease, nephrotic syndrome, I am afraid uh, basically you're going to need a, a calciferiol to adjust your vitamin D level. Group four, hypocalcemia. If your blood test shows that your calcium level is low, even though you could go with colocalciferol uh, to raise your uh, calcium level, but definitely in here, in people with uh, hypocalcemia, uh, 
calciferol as better option. Group five, if you have any kind of malabsorption, many practitioners, if they see a patient with malabsorption, they don't bother going with colocalciferol. They go directly with uh, calciferol. Group six, if you have been diagnosed with this, secondary hyper parathyroidism in chronic kidney diseases. You know, those people, uh, they have chronic kidney diseases. Those people, they are on dialysis. In the long term, they might develop uh, hyperparathyroidism. You know, we have uh, four small glands that they are located behind the thyroid gland, and we call them uh, parathyroid glands. Their main job is basically to uh, adjust uh, calcium level. If you have developed hyperparathyroidism secondary to your uh, chronic kidney disease, definitely you're going to need a uh, calciferiol. Calcitriol. Doesn't matter pills or shots. Let's see who has the indication to take uh, calcitriol. There are four groups of people that for them in medicine usually they prescribe calcitriol not colocalciferol uh, nor calciferiol let's see who are those four groups i'm going to put them in here for you first group hypo para thyroidism you see if you are suffering from uh, hypoparathyroidism that means your parathyroid glands, they are underactive. Usually it's better to go with a uh, calcitriol. Group two. Hyper parathyroidism due to chronic kidney diseases. So if you are suffering from chronic kidney disease and secondary to your chronic kidney disease, you have developed hyperfunction of your parathyroid glands, uh, you're going to need a uh, calcitriol. Group three, those people that are taking this medication, ketoconazole. This is a antifungal antibiotic that the medicine they prescribe for a variety of uh, fungal infections if you are going to take this medication especially for a long time uh, definitely you're gonna need calcitriol and group four those people they have uh, high levels of FGF23 FGF stands for fibroblast growth factor 23 in two groups of people uh fgf actually is gonna go up those people uh they suffer from uh renal failure you know, those people they have renal failure and they are on dialysis they're gonna have uh high levels of fgf2 and definitely these people they're gonna need calcitriol and those people that they have developed uh, osteomalacia uh, because uh, of uh, cancer. I'm going to put in here, we call them uh, onco oncogenic osteomalacia. So these five groups of people, they're going to need uh, calcitriol. These six groups of people, they're going to need calciferiol. And these are the six groups of people, they're going to need uh, colocalciferol in the forms of shots. Let's go with part two. Vitamin D2 or ergocalciferol uh, actually comes in two forms, pills and shots. In one of our videos in the past, we discussed the differences between vitamin D2 and uh, D3. 
If you want to learn more about their differences, definitely you can watch that video. And if you are a healthy person and you want to take vitamin D just for maintaining your uh, blood level of vitamin D, you may go with vitamin D2. It really doesn't matter. However, in medicine, there are three medical conditions that they go with vitamin D2, not D3 necessarily. Uh, the first group of people are those who have been diagnosed with hypoparathyroidism. That means your parathyroid glands, they are not functioning properly. They are underactive. And there is a medical condition. It's called familial hypophosphatemia. It's a, a rare group of inherited diseases that can affect the kidney and the metabolism of vitamin D. And in people with this medical condition, usually they go with vitamin D2. And also there is a, a bone disease in children. It's called vitamin D resistant rickets type 2 because children with this type of bone disease do not respond properly to vitamin D3. That's why they prefer to go with vitamin D2. Let's go with part three. In medicine, there are at least seven analogs of vitamin D and they have their own indications. I have put those seven analogs uh, on the board already for you. First five analogs are related to calcitriol. They are uh, calcipotriol, aldecalcitol, maxacalcitol, oxacalcitriol, and paracalcitol. And two analogs uh, are related to calcifidiol. They are alpha-calcitol and dorex calciferol. And you can see their indications in medicine. Uh, calcipotriol usually comes in the form of lotions and creams uh, for topical use in people with psoriasis. And this analog, L-calcitol, has been approved for the treatment of osteoporosis only in Japan and we don't see in any other countries. And the other five analogs, they are used in secondary hyperparathyroidism in people with chronic kidney disease. I really hope that you learned something interesting today because we make science easy to understand. Now you know. If you don't want to miss our next video, you can subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube. To support us, you can share, like, or comment on this video. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.